There's one crucial reason why attracting your ideal guy feels more painful than pulling teeth these days. Men and women have significant differences in what makes us feel attracted to each other. So in today's video, I'm revealing these five major differences so you can stop wasting time, stand out to men, and inspire them to pursue you without lowering your standards. There are many reasons why men and women have different attraction strategies. Some of these are evolutionary in nature, some of these are psychological, some of these are cultural, but my goal of this video isn't to say everything works black and white and men are always this way and women are always this way. This is a much more nuanced approach. However, even though things are not static and monolithic, there are going to be patterns where many men show up a certain way and many women show up a certain way. Now, this isn't to say that things cannot change or they cannot evolve, but it is to say that unless you're keenly aware of the way things work, you'll be at the mercy of being in reaction, being upset, not knowing how to beat the system to make sure that it works for you. So in every situation that I share with you right now, in terms of a difference between men and women's attraction strategy, I'm also going to point out something practical you can use so that you are not at the mercy of the way things are, but you can use this to your advantage to get the most out of it and create the connection, the attraction, and the relationship you want. The first major difference between the way men and women feel attracted to each other is men are more visual initially and women are more based on emotional cues. That is not to say that men are not interested in emotions or that women are not visual. It's just to say that when men and women connect, he's going to be far more likely to let his eyes dictate what happens next and you're going to let your emotional response dictate how you want to be approached or if you want to continue. How can you use this to your advantage? Well, if men are more visual than not, then it becomes really important when you show up, if you want to create a connection with someone, that you are very presently aware of how you are showing up. Your level of openness, your level of radiance, your level of approachability matters. Unless the guy is a psychopath, he's going to be reading off your energy to find out if he can approach you or not. If you make more eye contact, if you are more aware that things are showing up in your presence, if you are able to get more close, physically speaking, then that's going to give him a higher degree of pursuit and lower the risk that you're going to metaphorically punch him or reject him if he approaches you. The second big difference in the way men and women are attracted to each other is the role of social status in the connection. Now, most men will have a lower need for you to be in any specific social status for them to pursue you. They don't care so much about your financial situation. They don't care so much about your job or the way society perceives you in terms of finances. That's gonna be something that you're far more likely to judge him for. Is he able to provide? Is he someone who can keep up pace? Is he someone who's ambitious? Is he someone who is sturdy financially or wobbly? And here's my advice, because you're far more likely to gauge him and want to connect with someone who is at least as resourceful financially as you are, that you take into account two things, his ability to stand his ground financially, but not at the expense of his emotions. If you have a choice between two guys, one who is sturdier financially, the other one He's not a millionaire, but he's holding his own, but he's much more keenly in tune with your feelings, your emotions, that you don't over-evaluate the finances over the emotional connection because up to a certain point, it does not matter in the longevity, in the sustainability of the relationship. Third major difference between the way men and women feel attracted to each other is timing and pacing. What does this mean? This means that men are more likely to want to move things quickly. And by quickly, it doesn't necessarily mean being married to you, but connecting, being physical, securing some form of exclusivity, even if there's no compatibility or no emotional connection just yet. You're far more likely to want to gradually seek to understand if this guy is compatible with you, if he has what it really takes. So the thing to take from this is not that guys are wrong for doing this, is that you are going to have to be the key of the pace. You're more likely than not have to be the one who's going to ask him to slow down, to ask him to wait, to ask him to get to know you better. Why? Because if he does that, if he invests more in you, then his ability to deepen and open and connect emotionally will strengthen. When that happens, he's far less likely to leave you. He's far less likely to ghost you. He's far less likely to conquer and then go for the next conquest. When there's skin in the game emotionally, 
he's far more likely to stay in a relationship and to do the right thing. Now, before I share my last two points, which are really important to know about, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you are not fully aware or not aware at all of the real reason you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, helping them to attract their ideal life partner, marriages and life partners that have stood the test of time. And I've put together the learnings in a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds. And if you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link on the description. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and within 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the question why you're still single and a custom report based on your specific blind spots that will share the number one thing you can do today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Physical attributes versus behaviors. I know this may not make too much logical sense this day and age, when medicine is so advanced and when you may or may not want to have children. But think about it this way. Back in the day, and we're talking about thousands and thousands of years of evolution, men would visually connect with women. They find the physical attributes that would maximize the possibility of offspring. Women would evaluate the behavior of the man, not just the physical attributes, even though those are important, even though women do care about physical attributes, but the characteristics, his qualities, his ability to be kind and compassionate and resourceful. Why? Because that would maximize the longevity and the potential for protection for the offspring. As I said, even if you don't want children right now, those things in you where you are seeking that behavior from a DNA perspective, when he's seeking those physical attributes that would maximize the potential for offspring, they still exist in us. The fact that things have been changing over the last hundred years, let's say, doesn't do away with thousands and thousands of years of evolution. This isn't to say that things can change. This isn't to say that we shouldn't be able to rise above at some point and make things different. But right now, when he connects with you, he's wanting to basically see who you are and what you're about is going to matter. So here's things you can do that can maximize your choices. Number one, don't focus on beauty, focus on health. There's a difference in you saying, I'm going to do these things to be more attractive to I'm going to do certain things because I want to live longer. I want to reduce inflammation in my system. I want to make sure I am the best, healthiest self possible. When you're doing those things, you naturally become more attractive to somebody else. The second thing I would love for you to do is to focus on radiance versus sexiness. There's no need to present yourself in a way that is highly sexual. The more you show up with an openness of heart, with radiance, the more likely he is to see the quality of the whole thing because it's something visual. You can physically see when somebody's more open, more radiant, more alive. If you focus on those traits, you'll be far more likely to enhance the size of your magnet. Why is this important? Because you have high standards. The stronger your magnet, the more likely the guys that are connecting with you and pursuing you, the more likely they are to be willing to go through hurdles to create the connection that you both are seeking. The last difference that I'll share today is men are more likely to be sexually connected versus emotionally and intimately connected at the beginning. So what does that mean? That means that one of his strategies for gauging the compatibility, for gauging the connection is going to be sexual. That goes in direct opposition to yours, which is emotional intimacy first, right? So who should give in? I'm saying he should give in. And here's what I mean by that. Because the risk of connecting with somebody sexually is much higher for you than it is for him. Starting from physical potential abuse to pregnancy. Because we're at a day and age where you're asking of a man to be the type of conscious partner that will really ensure an amazing multiple decade relationship, you want to make sure that he can actually wait on the leg gratification. That doesn't mean you don't flirt with them. That doesn't mean you don't open up in some way, but it does mean that if you are not ready to be sexually intimate with them, that you from the beginning with your high degree of confidence and openness and aliveness share with them, I feel I'm a highly sexual being, but not when I don't know someone, not when I'm not in a relationship with someone, not when there's no level of commitment. I need much more to be open in a sexual way than just connecting with you, just going on a date. It means something more to me than just physical connection. Now, the guy's gonna have two choices. He's gonna say, yes, I can do it, or no, I can't. If he cannot move on, you're not leaving gold on the table. If he can say yes, then he's improving his ability to be the kind of partner that will create an amazing relationship for the long haul. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel because this is the way I can grow and reach more women. If you click like and subscribe, too many people watch these videos but never subscribe. If you're one of those, just subscribe, it's free. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, 
manipulation, games or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.